Microscopically, prosthetic type urethral polyps show delicate papillary fronds with true fibrovascular cores lined by benign prosthetic epithelium with its typical dual cell population of luminal PSA positive cells and basal cells showing expression of basal cell markers such as high molecular weight cytokeratins or P63. Benign prosthetic acini are usually seen in the papillary cores and in the subjacent fibromuscular stroma. And another thing that we usually see in these lesions are benign um, scattered urethelial cells intermixed with this prosthetic epithelium that is lining the papillary structures. The urethelium is better highlighted using GANA3. Let's see some examples. This is a low power view of a lesion which was described on the cystoscopy report as a small papillary mass protruding into the urethral lumen from the posterior wall. We see a fibromuscular stroma containing benign prostate plants with their typical undulating luminal contours, some intraluminal concretions or corporal amylacea. We see that the surface epithelium mostly resembles that of the prosthetic glands and is covering um, delicate papillary projections with true fibrovascular pores. On a closer view, we notice there is also some intermixed benign urethelium focally, and we can better appreciate the papillary nature of the lesion. These delicate papillary fronds with these thin, true fibrovascular cores. Another thing to notice is that there is no prominent inflammation or edema in the adjacent stroma. Another area to highlight the benign prostatic epithelium lining this lesion, which is considered to be ectopic in nature. We can appreciate the dual cell population, the columnar luminal cells with their frothy, pale cytoplasm and more purple, dark staining nuclei, as well as the compressed cells at the basement membrane, the basal cells with their lighter staining, slate gray colored nuclei. Another image showing slender papillary projections lined by prostatic epithelium and the subjacent fibromuscular, uh, fibromuscular stroma containing benign prostate glands with minimal, if any, surrounding inflammation or edema. This contrasts, for example, with fibroepithelial urethral polyps, which in their most common histological variants show broad cloverleaf-like projections covered by urethelium, which frequently invaginates into the subjacent stroma, forming cystically dilated nests resembling glandular structures. And of course, there is no prosthetic epithelium or fibroepithelial um, urethral polyp. Another differential to consider is papillary urethritis, as we mentioned, which, apart from the fact that it shows a purely epithelial lining, would also show more prominent inflammation and edema, both of which are usually scarce in a prosthetic type urethral polyp, as seen in this um, image. Let's see some stains. PSA, or NKX 3.1 if you prefer, uh, will beautifully highlight the prosthetic nature of the epithelium lining these lesions. But actually, you don't need to perform stains on this lesion. This is a purely histomorphological diagnosis. Stains were made in this case just for illustrative purposes. But if you do them, PSA will nicely highlight the luminal cells of the prostatic epithelium. If you perform basal cell markers, such as high molecular weight cytokeratin or P63, or a combination of both, as in this case, this will show a retained basal cell layer, in this case in a beautifully continuous fashion, highlighting the benign nature of the prosthetic epithelium lining these lesions. MSTR is typically completely negative in these lesions, and GATA3 usually highlights some, sometimes more, sometimes less, scattered 